was a near miss. Where? 16. Go around and stand at Mr. Perch for knowledge. So what do you have in mind? I have a lead on a very big story. Our bodies are assaulted by toxins in so many ways. You've achieved so much. I mean, the book, the campaign, it's really raised awareness. And so will your newspaper's coverage. Oh, can I check? Um, the word organo... Organophosphate, the bad boys that we will need to avoid. It's all in there. Farm and factory workers, soldiers, crew, people affected Great every staff, day Judy. by... Judy, I do have another meeting to go to. OK, no worries. <laughs> right. Now, deep inside there are the oil-bearing seals we were talking about. Air pressure keeps them sealed, so by design... Wait. Alan. So you're telling me that Echo Lima's engine seals leak oil? <laughs> Just small amounts. Or sort of replace them. I've told you, they're designed to leak. Changing the seals is like a complete engine overhaul. You know the cost of that. We need to cut costs if we're to meet the third quarter targets. Uh, Alan, I come from the offshore oil industry. If, if a seal is compromised... This is totally you... different. It's not a safety issue. Really? What about Flight 313? Could carbon monoxide be a risk to pilots? Sure. It's caused many plane crashes. But that was years ago. Well, let me show you. See the white square of the circle? See all detector. The air is contaminated with carbon monoxide. Circle changes color. OK, thank you. Sure. It's a bit of a blonde question. But how do you start a jet engine? Well, it don't start like a car with a battery. You need air and lots of it, usually ducted from an APU, small engine at the tail of the airplane. And once the engine's running, it, uh, it sends the bleed air back through the same ducting to the cabin. Bleed air? And the air that's bled off from the compression section of the engine pressurizes the aircraft cabin. So the air you breathe on a plane comes from the engine? Eh? Well, lucky they have detectors. For what? Well, carbon monoxide. Surely it would warn if stuff like oil got into the air. Only light aircraft need CO detectors, love. Jets have no detection systems. Find out what shit's in this stuff. There is a workplace problem resulting in chronic and acute illness amongst flight crew, both pilots and cabin crew. Further, we are concerned passengers may also be suffering from similar symptoms to those exhibited by flight crew. Is it happening in the workplace? For us, the pilot association, the aircraft, and the answer undoubtedly must be yes, listening to what the speakers have said. For years, the tobacco industry was successfully able to deny that there was a connection between smoking and lung cancer. In the end, the court proved that there was. The aviation industry is now in the same position that the tobacco industry was when it was brought to book. Both these industries have traded people's health and safety for profit, and now the aviation industry is at the end of its tobacco road. We've got the front fan here, okay, the compression section along here. And the oil bearing seals are around here somewhere? That's right, there's multiple ones going along down here, yes. Okay. In 2010, the High Court of Australia upheld a ruling that inhaling heated engine oil fumes was harmful. And corruption, not just negligence, large sums of money have changed hands. Hush money. Well, or blood money. Make no mistake, Natasha, you're entering dangerous territory. This is a huge industry and there's too much at stake. You must take great care. This is a section of the bleed air ducting system. How I got hold of it, suffice to say, it wasn't without risk. This is a page from his toxicology report. 
Among the nasties, it revealed tricresyl phosphate, an organophosphate, like sarin, the weapon of mass destruction. Tricresyl phosphate is found in the engine oils. They're copies of aircraft technical log pages. Tech logs are the primary source for recording data on each flight an aircraft makes. So an aircraft captain routinely keeps records like this? In the aircraft, yes. But not in his personal records. He must have copied these secretly. See, the pilot will enter any defects here. This airline safety report, ASR, would have been sent to the airline safety department, then on to the CAA, the aviation regulator. So the captain has reported his worries. But engineering has fobbed him off, returned the aircraft back into service. So the airline's flying aircraft that aren't... Airworthy. In a regulatory sense, yes. 150 people could have been killed because of an oil leak. And you know what the air accident investigators would have concluded? Pilot error. Do you really think the industry will let them fit filters in their aircraft, even if they wanted to? The admission, the legal implications, it's just too big. But we'll see. It is almost 60 years since the danger of fumes seeping into the cabin air was first reported. With the notable exception of the new Boeing 787, virtually all passenger jets still have flawed and potentially dangerous bleed air systems, a design that leaks pyrolyzed oil into the air supply. Would the minister agree that most shocking of all is the fact that airlines fail to inform passengers when they have been exposed, which, and I have chosen my words carefully, must be a breach of every passenger's rights and casts a dark reflection on the aviation industry. What solutions does the minister have? <laughs>